Okay, hello everybody. This is Terry with the Pre-Mom team with our special guest today, Dr. Ariana Zastro, a naturopathic doctor. We're really excited to have you here today. Excited to be here today. Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. If everything goes well, we should be able to answer some questions live at the end. So please keep those comments and questions rolling as we get this started. We are going to be specifically focusing on supplementation and nutrition and the effects on egg quality, getting good egg quality. And we're going to be focusing on both men and women. So please keep your questions open for both. I know we don't always talk about male infertility or male fertility. So we welcome those as well. And a reminder that you can find Ariana right in your Premom app. If you go to more and schedule a consultation, you can find her there under doctors and set up a personal consultation. I think that's what I wanted to cover. Um, we will be answering some of your questions in her presentation. So keep an eye out for those. Thank you for those advanced questions on Instagram and Facebook. And again, please keep those questions coming. If we have some time at the end, we'll address as many as we can. All right, so why don't we start with you telling a little bit about yourself, your background, your experience. Let us get to know sure. you a little bit. Sure. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Ariana Zastro. I am a naturopathic doctor practicing in Orange County, California. Um, I did my undergraduate work um, in biology at Penn State University. Um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania. And then when I found naturopathic medicine, I moved to San Diego to pursue um, my degree. Once I finished, uh, I joined a practice with an integrative gynecologist. Um, so we were seeing women of, of all ages there, um, but that's really where my love for fertility um, grew. So that's kind of my background. Awesome. And we did get, I have comments now, so I can get those later. Oh, great. Great. All right. Tell us a little bit why you decided to work with Prima. Sure. So when the opportunity came to work with Pre-Mom and Partner, um, I was thrilled uh, because these sorts of technologies really empower women to learn about their own body, their own fertility. Um, I was diagnosed with PCOS in my early 20s, um, and it was through these types of technologies that I learned what was happening with my body. Um, so it's really been my passion to share that with women ever since. So when the opportunity came along, it was perfect. That's fantastic because so many women are interested in and struggle with PCOS. I think that's been one of our most popular panels sure. and spotlights. So it's sure. great that you have that personal experience to share. Yes, absolutely. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your specialization um, and who you like to work with? Sure. So. Um, I specialize in women's health, so really the whole spectrum, but my true passion is helping women of reproductive age. Um, so those who are trying to conceive and kind of in this preconception phase, uh, those who are struggling to conceive, um, and those who are preparing for fertility treatments. Um, those are my, my favorite patients to work with. And um, I use a lot of different um, treatment modalities, um, but one of my favorites um, and kind of the foundational treatment is nutrition. Which is what we're talking about today. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Great. So I'm going to let you take it away and tell us sure. all your awesome information. About sure. Okay. So today we are focusing on um, how to improve your egg quality and sperm quality using nutritional medicine as well as supplementation. Um, you know, I always say it takes a healthy egg and a healthy sperm to have a healthy baby. So we want to talk about ways that we can achieve that um, on a day to day basis. So, you know, we'll start with the egg, and then we'll move to the sperm, and then we'll talk about ways to support um, both of those. So I think uh, the term egg quality is, is thrown around a lot. We all know we need good egg quality, but what exactly does that, what does that mean? Um, and essentially what it means is the number of eggs that you have that are chromosomally normal. Um, 
we were born with all of our eggs. Um, and before you ovulate, they actually undergo a maturation process, which is about 100 days. And during that time, they are really vulnerable to damage. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is how we can protect those precious eggs um, using, again, nutrition and supplementation. There's a lot of different factors that can impact egg quality, um, most notably age, right? Um, nutritional status, environmental exposures, stress, and genetic variabilities. Um, and oftentimes I'm asked, you know, how do I know if my eggs are good quality? What, how can we, how can we see? Um, unfortunately, we don't have a specific test for egg quality. Um, we can look at hormone levels, things like your day three hormones, estrogen, LH, FSH, um, to kind of give us a clue and, and measure ovarian reserve. Um, we can look at AMH, which is also um, a measure of ovarian reserve. Um, and we can do micronutrient testing to see, do you have the proper nutrients to support a healthy egg? Um, but again, there's no specific test. Um, so we just have to take into consideration all of these different factors and support the egg as, as best we can. Um, now, as far as sperm quality goes, um, that's a bit easier to measure. Um, typically that's done by sperm analysis. And what qualifies good sperm is sperm that, first of all, how many sperm um, in a sample per milliliter? Um, can they swim? Are they modal? Can they make it up to the egg? Um, and we're finding that sperm motility is really the most common issue that we're facing um, as far as male infertility goes. Also, do the sperm have a head, one head, a body, and a tail? Um, you'd be surprised how many don't. Um, is, the, is the semen um, thick or thin, right? You want it somewhere kind of in between. And how are the DNA in the sperm? Are, they, are the genes unraveled or are they nice and tight and ready to, to fertilize an egg? Um, you know, we did receive some questions regarding male fertility, and I, I, I'd like to take this time to point out that, you know, oftentimes um, when we're thinking about fertility issues, um, it's it's female directed, right? But we're learning that 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 is not the case. Um, they estimate that one third of fertility issues can be related to the female um, physiology anatomy. One third is male related and one third is a combination of both. So we cannot leave out um, the guys in this. Um, and, and actually there is um, an alarming decline in male fertility. Um, it's estimated that there's been a 1.4% decline over the past 40 years. So from 1973 until 2011, which is when we have the data, um, that's led to a 52.4 decrease in semen concentration. Okay, so again, this, this is huge um, and something that we can't ignore. So we'll talk about ways to support healthy sperm moving forward. Um, but what exactly is, what's causing this? What's, what's, what's ruining the sperm quality? Um, and we don't know for certain, but I think it's fair to assume that it's likely a combination of toxic exposure, radiation exposure, um, poor nutritional status, um, stress, and social poison. So things like alcohol, recreational drugs, and cigarettes can obviously um, make an impact as well. And in men, like I said, it's, it's much easier to measure. We just do a, a semen analysis, a sperm analysis, which again, easy, easy for, for most men. Um, and then you can also take a look at male hormones if it's indicated. So um, they have super, super low sperm concentration. We wanna make sure that the hormones aren't contributing to that in some way, um, or if there is also an element of, of sexual dysfunction. Um, or they have medical history that warrants a hormone workup. 
But, you know, the good news is that we can um, improve all of these parameters, both in egg and in sperm, using nutrition and supplementation, which is what we are, are focusing on today. So we'll start to talking a, a little bit about nutrition, um, what we can do dietarily, um, and then we'll talk about some supplements that are have some really good data as well. Um, so as far as nutrition goes, um, you know, there is no perfect diet for fertility. Um, I wish there was, but there's not. Everybody's needs are different. Um, so we're going to talk more about, you know, general guidelines, things that can be beneficial, male, female, or, and regardless of, of what, um, you know, your fertility concerns are. Um, these, these recommendations can be tailored more specifically given your situation. Um, but again, today we're going to be talking more broadly. So just some general guidelines. Um, the first and probably most important is going to be to eat whole foods. Um, and I'm sure you've probably heard people say that before. And what exactly does that mean? Um, is it just a grocery store? But basically what it means is eating foods that are processed the least amount possible. So ideally foods that are coming straight from the earth, right? fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, things that don't need a, a, a huge processing um, to be eaten, right? So less things that are in boxes, um, bags, things that are more fresh produce um, are going to be whole foods. So we want to include as many of those in the diet as possible. Uh, secondly, I always encourage my patients um, to be eating a variety of antioxidant rich foods. Um, an antioxidant is really just an umbrella term um, for lots of different compounds um, things like vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, lycopene, beta carotene, um, polyphenols. There's, there's tons. Um, but to keep it really simple, um, the more colorful foods that you have in the in your diet, the better, right? So anything rich in color, bright in color is likely going to be packed full of antioxidants. So think things like fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, um, teas, dark chocolate is another good one and one of my favorites. Um, we want to include as many as possible. Thirdly, um, you want to make sure that you're eating nutrient dense foods. Um, so foods that are rich in protein, healthy fats, um, healthy carbohydrates. We know that not eating enough certainly can impact egg quality. Um, so oftentimes I'll recommend about 30% of the diet uh, be protein. So clean meats, eggs, you know, turkey, chicken, um, lamb, Whatever, whatever you like, um, but we want to make sure that you have enough protein. Then about 40% of the diet, um, when you're actively trying to conceive, should be healthy fats. Um, so things like olive oil, coconut oil, nuts, seeds, nut butters, avocado. These are all fantastic and support, um, support the health of the egg. Um, and then the other 30% should be carbohydrates. Um, and the majority of those should be fruits and vegetables. Um, so things like leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, root vegetables like sweet potatoes, um, and, and tons of, like I said, colorful fruits, things like berries um, are fantastic. And then the last general guideline as far as food goes um, is to try to eat organic when possible, um, if available to you, um, both where you live and, and financially. Um, there have been studies that have shown women who are undergoing IVF treatment, who are eating um, fruits and vegetables, they, they, you know, they're doing the, trying to do the right thing um, that have high pesticide residue on them um, actually have lower pregnancy outcomes. 
Um, and also it's, it's been shown in animal studies that these pesticides can impact um, actual egg quality. So if you can, eat organic. If it's not possible to get all of your foods organic, um, try to use the Environmental Working Group's Clean 15 Dirty Dozen list um, and try to buy at least the Dirty Dozen um, organically if possible. And then of course, you know, we want to make sure that you're well hydrated. Um, drinking about half your body weight in water is, is a reasonable rule um, to follow. And you want to make sure that that water is is filtered, um, make sure that it's clean. Um, and for those of you who need a more visual representation of the guidelines that I just sort of spit out, um, I would encourage you to look up Dr. Mark Hyman's Pegan Food Pyramid. Um, this is the closest that I've found to the diet that I'm, I'm recommending um, in the context of fertility. Um, so I'll have my patients print it out, put it on their refrigerator, and it just helps to provide an easy, simple guide um, as to you know, how you can optimize um, the foods that you're eating. So that's the Pegan Food Pyramid. Um, we don't have that many questions right now. Just okay. had a comment that someone's been trying for three years, she's 41. Um, I'm sure what you've shared with her could be helpful. I don't know if you wanna add anything. Sure. So, women. yeah, you know, we can, as far as diet goes, and we're going to be moving into the supplement aspect of things, but depending on your age, also your needs, um, can really sort of determine how much of a, um, a therapeutic diet that we use, right? Um, using food as medicine. So we can be pretty aggressive with that. Um, and again, that would depend on your needs and, and something that we'd have to probably discuss, you know, your personal situation. Um, and then there's also maintenance style diets. So again, it, it's all very personal, um, but these are just some general recommendations um, that can be helpful. Okay. All right, so let's-, let's Move into Yes. So let's go ahead and move into supplements, um, which seems to be a hot topic. I know that there are, um, you know, so many claims. There are so many supplements available on the market. It can be a really difficult thing to navigate. Um, it's also something that's expensive. And, um, you know, we want to use supplements that have, first of all, evidence backing them up. Um, so good data that they actually have an impact. Um, and those are the ones that I've chosen to talk about today. Um, so power, supplements can be a really powerful tool if you're using them correctly. And, and that often requires guidance because there's far, the, the market is flooded uh, with a lot of information, a lot of products, and it's almost impossible to navigate on your own. So that's why I'm here to, to help. So First, we'll start with a quality. Um, so using supplements to, again, improve um, or increase the amount of eggs that are chromosomally normal at the end of that maturation process. Um, and the more that are normal, the, the higher rate of um, fertilization. So that's, that's really the goal. So um, I think it goes without saying that um, Anyone who is trying to conceive whether egg quality is an issue or not should be on a high quality prenatal um, as well as essential fatty acids. So um, EPA, DHA, DPA. Uh, I chose not to, to talk much about those because they're kind of non-negotiable. Um, they're widely recommended. Um, and they. I, I don't want to discount that they absolutely do have an impact on egg quality, but I want to talk about a few others that um, are not as widely maybe accepted or, or known. So the first one, which probably most people have heard about um, and is widely recommended, um, you know, with, with IVF, um, and some, some just you know regular um, fertility treatment um, would be CoQ10. Okay, so that's that's sort of the um, best known, and and that's for a reason, and that's because there's a lot of good data behind it. 
Um, it does protect the egg as it's going through that maturation process. Um, it helps to support energy production in the egg. Um, and as we get older, our CoQ10 um, serum levels decrease basically after age 30, um, which is why it's such, it plays such an important role, especially with advanced maternal age, right? We want to replace that CoQ10 that we've lost. Um, they have found that there is a correlation between low plasma CoQ10 levels and miscarriage. Um, and also higher CoQ10 levels will increase um, the amount of eggs that mature as well as the embryo grade during IVF treatment. So typically, um, the dose that I will recommend will be between 300 and 600 milligrams daily. Um, and, and I know that's quite a range, but a lot of that depends on um, your age, um, your, your fertility timeline, um, your diet, um, and how your hormone levels look, um, how aggressive we are, are with treatment. Um, but typically that's going to be a safe dose. Um, and it's best combined with PQQ um, at 40 to 60 milligrams. Um, so you can find combination formulas. Um, and the PQQ essentially helps the CoQ10 get where it needs to be. So that's why I like to do it together. Um, now, the second supplement that I would I would like to discuss is melatonin. Um, so melatonin is typically known for its ability to help people sleep. Um, but it also has an incredible antioxidant um, capacity. So again, it's going to protect that egg during the maturation process. Um, and we find that there's there are melatonin receptors actually on the ovary, um, on the embryo, on the placenta. So it's it's an important um, role. It plays an important role throughout the entire conception process. Um, and again, in IVF studies, it's shown to improve egg and embryo quality, fertilization rate, and pregnancy rate. Now, even if you aren't going down the IVF route, um, you know, the reason that a lot of this data is coming from IVF studies is because we have a way to control it and actually measure it, um, whereas in the natural conception process, we don't. So we can kind of take that data um, and apply it to the natural conception process as well. Um, and the dose that I recommend for melatonin is going to be between three to six milligrams at bedtime. Um, three milligrams is a great starting dose. Um, we don't wanna go too high, so I wouldn't recommend going past the six milligrams um, because it can have an impact on ovulation um, if, if we're dosing it really, really high. Um, so between th three milligrams and six milligrams is, is generally a good place to, to start. And then the last um, supplement that I want to talk about as far as improving egg quality um, is myo-inositol, okay? And this one, it's, it's a sugar essentially. So if you put it in, you know, if, you're, if you are supplementing with a myo-inositol powder, um, you put it in your water, it tastes kind of sweet. Um, it's actually a member of the B vitamin uh, complex group. It improves egg maturation, fertilization, and embryo development. Um, it improves insulin sensitivity. Um, so it's particularly helpful in women with PCOS. Um, and it works synergistically with melatonin. So it's a really nice combination. Um, and the dose for this one is going to be two grams twice daily. Okay. Um, so those are probably my top three female supplements for improving egg quality. And I have to say that, you know, this is not medical advice. This is essentially what, you know, we see in the data um, that I'm presenting to you. you I always encourage you to um, discuss these with your doctor, make sure that they are a safe um, and effective option for you, given your personal medical needs. Um, and if you need help sort of sorting through that, you can book a consultation with me as well. I'm, I'm available to help you do that. All right, so then moving into sperm quality, how do, we, um, how do we boost the health of those little swimmers? Well, um, same thing with the 
egg, right? I, it goes without saying that um, we want the the basics. So a high quality multivitamin on board and essential fatty acids. Um, so EPA, DHA, um, DPA, essentially fish oil. So those are kind of my two non-negotiables. Um, but again, I wanted to talk about some other ones. Um, the first of which is CoQ10, which I know I'm double dipping um, from the egg quality into the sperm quality, but it's so effective that it, 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 is worthy of talking about twice. Um, in men, it's it's typically a, a lower dose that will be effective. So around 200 milligrams um, can have quite an impact. But again, that's going to be dependent on what we're seeing in, in the semen analysis. Um, potentially, you know, a higher dose would be reasonable given what we see. Um, but 200 milligrams at 26 weeks or for 26 weeks, excuse me, um, improved sperm motility and morphology by 18 and 30%, which is quite a bit with, with no other changes. The second one that I, I wanted to mention is ashwagandha. Um, and this is an herb that has been used for a long, 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 long time. Um, but I would say more recently used in the context of male infertility. Um, it's mostly known for its, for its effects on lowering stress. Um, that's why a lot of people take it and, and they really love it. Um, but we've, there have been studies that have shown about 225 milligrams three times daily for only 12 weeks, almost triples sperm concentration and doubles sperm volume, which is huge um, in just 12 weeks. So definitely worth mentioning, definitely worth considering and discussing, you know, with your doctor if that would be an appropriate um, addition. And then lastly, um, L-carnitine. So this is an amino acid derivative, um, which essentially helps the cell get the energy that it needs. Um, and if you think about sperm, right, they're, they're pretty energetic. They need a lot of energy to get up to the egg, to swim all the way up there. Um, and there's been tons of studies that have shown um, carnitine can significantly improve sperm concentration and sperm count in men. Um, and the dose is going to be between 600 to 1,000 milligrams daily um, to see that impact. Okay, so those are my top three for, for male, male um, uh, sperm quality. And that pretty much sums up what I wanted to discuss, but now it's time to, to talk about what you all wanted to discuss. So the question and answer part yeah, of- Yeah, we a couple of follow-ups. So let's jump in with those okay. really quickly. Sure, sure. Um, someone asked what the first supplement was. I think that was CoQ10 for both, correct? Yes, CoQ10 for both. Okay. And then someone also asked how you spell the last supplement. I think she was talking about um, myo-inositol. Myo sure. So it's M-Y-O-I-N-O-S-I-T-O-L, myo-inositol. And I know you did also, someone asked about PCOS and you did touch on that with, I think, myo-inositol, is that right? Yeah, so there's there's tons of great data um, with myo-inositol in the context of PCOS. Um, it helps to, of course, um, improve insulin resistance. It helps to lower testosterone levels, um, helps to improve ovulation rates. So in for a patient with PCOS, um, myo-inositol is a star. Yeah, there's one more. Sure. I'm sure I didn't miss any here. Um, she's asking about getting pregnant when overweight. And we did have mm. a, a panel that was completely on this topic, but can you tie sure. this somehow into nutrition and supplementation? Sure. So, you know, for my patients that are struggling um, with either being overweight or underweight, what I always recommend is that um, we address that first. So if you're struggling to lose weight, let's come up with, first of all, let's, let's figure out why, 
well, why are you struggling to lose weight? Um, address any root issues that may be contributing. So for example, hormone levels, inflammation, blood sugar regulation, stress, you know, address those and then come up with a therapeutic diet for you to get you in the healthy weight range. Um, so, you know, give yourself about three months to really focus on that before you start to actively trying to conceive. Um, and some of these general guidelines that I provided today would certainly be helpful in the context of weight loss, but there are some better strategies that will help you to get into that healthy weight range um, that may not be the best strategy when you're actively trying to conceive. So again, I would give yourself, you know, those three months to really focus on getting into the healthy range, ad addressing the root causes that are contributing to your inability to lose weight, and then sort of move into this, you know, fertility-based diet. Awesome. And then we had another comment or a question about being older. This person says she's 44. Any advice? 44. Any further advice for those who are increasing sure. age as they're trying to Sure. So, you know, age is one of the, the strongest contributing factors to a quality, right? We know that that becomes sort of the main issue. Um, what I would say is, we would want to be more aggressive probably in somebody who is 44 versus somebody who's 34 um, using, you know, all of the strategies that we can. So, um, you know, combining more supplements, using the diet more aggressively, likely in combination with, um, you know, whatever reproductive technologies are available. Um, and again, a lot of this depends on what your numbers are looking like in your personal situation. But I would say, you know, increasing doses for the most part is, is a more appropriate or an aggressive way um, to address somebody who's 44. Um, we did get a question about specific brands and we want to stay away mm -hmm. from mentioning any brands. Um, but they also asked, um, are there any products we should stay away from? Mm. So it's, this is difficult um, to do without some sort of professional guidance. Um, because again, there are going to be so many products on the market. And we want to make sure that what you're taking is, first of all, not filled with any extra contributing fillers or things that could potentially be counterproductive. Um, we also want to make sure that the dose is therapeutic. So meaning, you know, you could, you can go to the grocery store, buy a supplement that has all of these great ingredients. Um, but it's not at a dose that's actually going to have an impact on the quality of the egg. Um, and that's where it gets really tricky. So, you know, I, I if you're, I hope maybe that, that answers your question. Um, as far as particular supplements that you should avoid, I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking, but um, there's a whole host of them. So again, that's where the, the professional guidance comes in, where somebody needs to take a look at everything that you're taking um, and make sure that none of them could be um, counterproductive in, in your fertility efforts. So it sounds like it's really important to see your medical professional and talk about what you're taking currently and also what you could be taking. Sure. Both sides. Exactly. When you're trying to get pregnant. Exactly. Exactly. Great. All right. Let's jump into those other questions and keep those questions coming as we're doing sure. that. So one question I got, which I think is a great question, is how long should we take the supplements? So I would say um, a minimum of 100 days prior to conception. Um, that maturation process of the egg and the sperm actually takes about 100 days. So that's, that is the prime time to really work on protecting the egg, making that egg as healthy as possible prior to fertilization. So 100 days prior to conception is ideal. Now, if you've actively been trying to conceive, I would recommend taking them until you achieve pregnancy. Um, 
And, you know, if, again, this is where consulting can be really helpful, but if there are some on board that you may not want to continue into pregnancy, um, sometimes I'll recommend taking them through ovulation and then discontinuing um, to see if we achieve pregnancy. So um, it, it kind of depends, but 100 days prior to conception is kind of the golden rule. So I got a question regarding the quantity you should take of each supplement, especially for people over age 40. So I think I touched on that um, with all of the supplements I mentioned. Um, all right, what if I've been taking the supplements for years, but still no pregnancy and I've seen a fertility specialist? Got pregnant once while seeing a fertility doctor, but ended in miscarriage at nine weeks. Okay, for, for this person first, I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, now, if you've been taking the supplements for years and you haven't seen a, a change um, on, on measurable parameters, um, potentially they're, they're not the correct supplements or they're not addressing the root issues that are contributing to your fertility issues. Um, and certainly we don't want you wasting your, your money um, or your time. Um, so that's, again, where, where a consultation can really be um, so helpful. You can take, you know, have somebody take a look who's really knowledgeable about these, um, about supplementation and, and look at the data that we have to find a better plan for you. Um, because it sounds like maybe this plan is not, um, you know, moving you forward. Okay. All right. Um, so would like more information on how to lose weight with hypothyroidism as it's very hard. I've done keto, Weight Watchers, 100, 1,200 calorie diets, fad diets, and never seen a big drop in weight loss. It took me seven to eight months um, to lose 18 pounds last year with keto. Okay, so I'm sorry you're struggling. Um, this can be a really frustrating um, experience, but I would I would definitely encourage you to work with a provider who's willing to again dive a little bit deeper and see. Um, you know, look at a complete thyroid panel, make sure that your thyroid is, is optimally functioning. Look at other things that could be contributing to, um, to your inability to lose weight. So hormone levels, inflammation, blood sugar regulation, stress, all of these things need to be addressed, um, especially if, if, you know, you've been working on this for so long without success. So it sounds like there's a piece of the puzzle missing here. So I have a question here regarding the dosage required for optimum effect, um, vitamin D, CoQ10, omega-3, and aspirin. All right, so with a vitamin D, that's going to be very dependent on your levels. So vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, meaning that it will build up in your system over time. Um, so you want to have your levels checked, really. That's, I mean, that's the bottom line with vitamin D. 2,000 I use is generally a safe dose, um, but some people need much more and some people need less. Um, typically, prenatals will have between 1,000 and 2,000 I use in them. We know that vitamin D is important um, as far as a quality goes. We certainly know it has a, um, an important function um, as far as health of, of the baby goes. Um, so uh, that's something that I always run on my patients um, prior to conception. We want to know what your baseline is and we want to make sure that it's optimal during pregnancy. So that's one I, I recommend checking in on the levels. Um, CoQ10 I mentioned between 300 milligrams and 600 milligrams is, is best. Um, and then omega-3, um, that's going to depend on your diet a bit. Um, if you're including omega-3 rich foods in your diet, um, if you have a high level of inflammation, um, but usually between 1200 milligrams and, and 2000 milligrams is an appropriate dose. Um, now, aspirin, um, that's, that's not something I, I routinely recommend, um, but the dose that is sometimes recommended depending on the situation is about 81 milligrams, so a small dose of aspirin. And that's to help manage inflammation, um, 
but I find that there are other more effective ways of doing that um, through diet and, and supplementation. Okay. So we got questions about CoQ10, which I think we covered, myo-inositol. Some more questions about CoQ10. Okay, and then we have somebody who wants more information about B vitamins. Um, should you be taking B vitamins um, and increase luteal phase and temps after ovulation looks higher? Okay, so B vitamins are absolutely imperative for the health of the egg, um, particularly folate and B12. Um, these help to keep the DNA, the integrity of the DNA. So they lead to more um, mature and chromosomally normal eggs. Okay, so absolutely imperative. Um, B6 is often used to improve the luteal phase. Um, it basically helps your body to be more sensitive to the receptors. So respond, or excuse me, to the hormones, um, respond more effectively to the hormones that are being released. Um, and then we know B vitamins also are really supportive of adrenal function and your stress response, um, which is super important um, for anybody who's trying to conceive, okay? All right. Um, I got a question about male, what, what men can be doing to promote fertility. I think we talked about that. Um, and then the last question I got is when to supplement and am I over supplementing? So this is a bit of a tricky question without knowing exactly, you know, what you're taking, what your needs are, what your diet is. Um, but when we talk about over supplementing, there's a few things you want to consider. So is the vitamin that you're taking water soluble or fat soluble? Um, if it's water soluble, typically the body will just kind of get rid of what it doesn't need. However, we don't want you paying for expensive pee and elimination, basically. Um, you know, it, it's that's why you want to be very specific about what you're doing. Um, if the vitamin is fat soluble, um, you certainly want to stay under the upper limit um, because those build up in your system over time. Um, how are you supposed to know? Well, I mean, the best way is, first of all, to have somebody take a look at what you're taking, um, talk about what you're eating. Um, and also you can, you know, micronutrient testing is also a, a valid consideration to see exactly what your needs are, where you're deficient, where you're not deficient, so you can tailor your plan around that. And those are all of the questions I have on my side here. Great, I actually have a couple questions, and then we have one question also live here. Sure. Someone asked, um, you should stop taking supplements once you get a positive pregnancy test, is that correct? So that will depend on what you're taking. Um, and obviously sh any supplement that you're taking after a positive pregnancy test should be cleared with your OB. Um, typically ones that are able to be continued are obviously going to be your prenatal, um, your essential fatty acid, um, some of the others, not so much. So for example, some of the ones I talked about, sometimes CoQ10 is recommended to continue, sometimes it's not. Um, and that's going to depend on your OB's preferences. Um, melatonin typically is discontinued upon a, preg a positive pregnancy test. Um, Myo-inositol, again, depending on your situation, um, they've found myo-inositol in PCOS um, patients who have have achieved pregnancy has significantly decreased risk of gestational diabetes. So some OBs will absolutely recommend continuing that, um, whereas others are not, are not as comfortable. So um, I would say best thing to do is, is discontinue until you're able to consult with your OB. And I had a question about um, water. You said um, sure. half of your weight and that's ounces, you said, right? I remember. Yeah, half of your else. body weight in ounces is kind of a general. Like, like, how many cups would that be? Just wondering, because I've heard all these different numbers. Like, let's say 140 pounds. Sure. And that would be 70. 
Sure. So around six cups of water is reasonable. Um, you oftentimes hear eight, but I think that's a little exaggerated. Most people can't get that. So if you want to just keep it basic, I would say six cups of water a day. And, you know, other fluids count too, um, but six is a, a good goal. And I think you mentioned something about temperature. Oh, uh, not too cold. Sure. So interesting. Can you talk about Sure. That? So we don't recommend drinking water with meals, cold water with meals, as it can actually um, kind of inhibit the, di the digestion, absorption, and assimilation of nutrients. So we recommend you kind of sip throughout the day rather than have a big glass of ice water with your meal, um, if possible, right? So having water versus no water is better, but if you want to be, um, you know, best case scenario is throughout the day. And warmer water, okay, great. And then I don't know if, it doesn't look like we've had any um, more questions, but if anybody else has questions, here's your chance, jump in fast. <laughs> so while we're giving them that opportunity, could you just give another quick summary of the supplements you've mentioned today, both for females and males, sure. that they could bring up with their um, list? Sure, so um, on the female side, the non-negotiables, high quality prenatal and essential fatty acid, um, the three top players, the most um, effective as far as we know with the best data are going to be CoQ10, um, melatonin, and myo-inositol. Um, and for men, again, non-negotiable is going to be the multivitamin and the essential fatty acids. Um, and then the top three for improving sperm quality are going to be CoQ10, ashwagandha, and L-carnitine. Let me get one more question. Is it possible to conceive naturally at 44? Yes. I think that, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, any final thoughts while we're wrapping up here about uh, supplementation, nutrition for both men and women? Any final suggestions? It, um, thank you all for joining us. Um, if you have any further questions, I'm here to help. This is really uh, my area of expertise. I, I, I want to help you come up with the best plan um, given your needs, your situation. Um, so feel free to book a consult if, if you feel like you need further guidance. We're so excited to have you today, Dr. Ariana. Yeah, Again, she mentioned this was fun. Yeah, she's right in your app. So please schedule a consultation if you'd like to go deeper. As she mentioned, it's really important to get personalized information about your particular case. So you gave us a wealth of information today. Thank you so much. I know this sure. is a very popular topic. In the sure, and we can do and more. We'll to have you again. Yes, yes please absolutely. let us know what you'd like us to be talking about so we can see you and have yes, some more please. awesome presentations. All, All right. right, thanks so much, Sarah. Have a great rest of your day. You Thank too. You. Thank Bye, you everybody.